My presentation is on sensory processing, identifying patterns, and support strategies. Many students with autism struggle with sensory processing difficulties. We will be looking at each of the senses and how we can see these difficulties and how they affect a student's behaviors. What is sensory processing? Although not a criteria for diagnosis, people with autism process sensory experiences differently than persons without autism. The DSM-5 does now identify the hyper or hypo reactivity to sensory input or unusual interests in sensory aspects of environment as criteria under the restrictive repetitive patterns of behavior criteria. These sensory abnormalities make it difficult for people with sensory processing issues to interact with their environment. These sensory issues are more extreme than a child who is a picky eater or someone who just can't listen to country music. Another environmental example would be someone who struggles with auditory processing and has to go to the grocery store. When was the last time you went shopping and didn't notice the music playing? Because there always is. And the announcements that are made calling for personnel? All of these noises can make a simple grocery store trip very difficult. Sensory integration is defined as the organization of sensation for use. Essentially, it is how we accept the sensory input, process it, and use it in the environment. Maybe dancing in the aisles of the grocery store? There are seven sensory systems in the body that can be affected. We will be looking at each system and providing information on what it looks like for different students. Both hypo or hypersensitive patterns have been identified in children with autism. Sensory processing and autism. Although not considered a criteria for autism, sensory processing disturbance is finding support in new research on the universality of these symptoms across the diagnostic spectrum. Children with autism are frequently reported to have sensory sensitivities, such as sensitivity to sound and limited food preferences. This lack of response or overreaction to sensory input demonstrates how the child is interacting or processing information from their environment. The following link demonstrates the auditory overload that can occur. Sensory modulation is needed to make sense of the constant input of sensory stimuli. Sensory modulation is how the brain responds to the sensory environment and how it helps us remain at the appropriate levels of arousal. This is something that can be taught to students using sensitization and habituation therapies, usually by an occupational therapist. The central nervous system regulates the input and output. When this happens, effectively, the input matches the output. When ineffective, the input can be hyper, oversensitive, or hypo, undersensitive. Here's an example. Someone who is hypersensitive would find the tastes of foods overwhelming and would prefer the food to be plain or bland. Someone who is hyposensitive would be looking for foods that are spicy or very salty. They would look to enhance the flavor 
to satiate the sensory needs. Patterns in Sensory Processing There are three sensory responsivity groupings. Sensory over-responsivity or hypersensitive, sensory under-responsivity, also known as hyposensitive, and sensory seeking. Some patterns that have been observed are that young children with autism were more likely to demonstrate hyposensitivity. These are the little ones who will be looking for input from wherever they get, get it. Older children with autism were more likely to present with hypersensitivity. These kids will be looking to escape the levels of sensory input. Both hypo and hyper can co-occur in a child. So yes, you can have a child who hates having their teeth brushed, but will love to eat the spiciest hot wings around. Location and function of sensory systems. Tactile, touch, is located in the skin. Density of cell distributions varies throughout the body. Areas of greatest density include hands, mouth, genitals. Think about little children. Once they can pick something up, the next place it will inevitably go is to their mouth. This is how they explore their environment. Function is to provide information about the environment and object qualities such as pressure, texture, hard, soft, sharp, dull, heat, cold, and pain. How issues with touch presents itself. For those with hypersensitivity, you will see issues with clothing, like the tags in clothing and the fact that there cannot be any, not being able to tolerate socks or jeans, distress over getting hair combed or cut, using only their fingertips to touch things, not being able to stand being touched, hugged, etc. Sensitivity to temperature. For those with hyposensitivity, you will see the need to engage in messy play, like covering self in paint or pudding, engaging in self injurious behavior, SIB, like picking at their skin, head banging, or hitting themselves. Touching other people's hair. The need for excessive touching, hugs or squeezes, hand squeezes, head squeezes. Only wanting to go barefoot and a high threshold for pain or temperature. In my years of working with kids on the spectrum, I have had several experiences with the hypersensitivity to clothing. I have had several students who wear only sweatpants or gym type shorts. The feeling of the fabric or the weight of it is too much. I have also experienced many students who do not tolerate being touched. This will definitely need to be a consideration when choosing activities where touch is a component. Vestibular balance. Inner ear stimulated predominantly by head movements and input from other senses, specifically visual. Function. Provides information about where your body is in space. Identifies whether we are moving or our surroundings are moving. Gives information on speed and and direction. When I think of an example of what this is like, I just think about when I am in a car and look out the window and one of the cars begins to move. 
and that moment where you try to determine which car is moving, yours or theirs. How vestibular issues presents itself. Students will engage in rocking, spinning, jumping. They will have difficulty with being still. Can be a risk taker when moving or climbing. Hang upside down. Prefer running to walking. All of this excessive movement does not indicate good coordination, however. Students with hypersensitivity would look to avoid these movements, and those with hyposensitivity would be the kids we see engaging in all of these movement activities. Prior perception body awareness. Muscles and joints activated by movement relates to body position, orientation, and location. Function provides the body with information on where a certain body part is and how it is moving. How issues with prior perception presents itself. Movements being too stiff is an example of hypersensitivity. These kids usually have great posture when they sit or walk, but never loosen up enough when running or engaging in play activities. Hyposensitive looks like using too much force, squeezing a toothpaste tube too hard, pushing things too hard, pushing or leaning heavily, prefer tight clothing, toileting problems, drooling, spilling food from their mouth while eating, and an appearance of aggressive behaviors like playing too rough. This is the sense that allows you to step off a curb and not fall, walk up and down steps without having to watch. This is the sense that affects your self-awareness, emotional security, and the child's ability to feel safe and secure in their surroundings. I have a large young man who has issues with hypersensitivity. He walks and his back is straight as an arrow, but he is so stiff, almost as if he doesn't bend his legs when he walks. It makes it difficult for him to navigate tight spaces. Visual sight retina of the eye is stimulated by light. Function provides information about objects, allows us to move through time and space, provides boundaries. How issues with visual sensitivity presents itself. Hypersensitive will have poor eye contact. Enjoy the dark. Object to going outside on sunny days. Lots of squinting. Have difficulty finding things in a pile of similar objects a pair of matching socks out of a laundry basket, and sensitivity to changes in lighting. Hyposensitive will engage in hand flapping close to face, enjoy watching bright shiny objects that spin and engage in this behavior repeatedly, enjoy watching repetitive movements like flipping pages of a book, walk into people because too distracted by surroundings, and manipul manipulate objects close to face. Auditory hearing, inner ear, stimulated by sound waves. Function provides information about sounds in the environment. Loud, soft, high, low, near, far. How auditory processing difficulties presents itself. Hypersensitive, distressed by sudden loud noises, distressed by noises that do not typically bother others, pencil sharpener or phone ringing, cannot focus or complete tasks with background noises, fear of loud appliances, seeks out quiet areas, Vocalize loud, constant sounds to drown out other noises. Hyposensitive, seek out the loud, noisy toys. 
making constant loud sounds, speak louder than others, engages in loud noise-making activities like banging on a table, crave or respond positively to loud music, enjoy strange sounds, not follow verbal instructions, and appear to ignore other voices. This is another sensory processing issue that is fairly common with this population of students. I have often seen and worked with students who required noise-canceling headphones to help reduce the noise levels to a more tolerable level. What happens when you are also hypersensitive prior perceptively and are unable to tolerate these headphones? You walk around with your fingers in your ears. Or you could put your right arm up over your right ear, wrapping your arm over your head to put your right finger into your left ear. This way you still have a free hand. Some days simply the sound of someone who has a cold is breathing and the sound of the breathing makes you so upset that you feel the need to hit them. These are just a few examples of what it's like for kids with this sensory issue. These next two slides talk about sensory processing issues that are often connected and although we do not really address the sense of taste too often in physical activities, our sense of smell can affect where we engage in physical activities. Gustatory, taste. Taste is received through receptor cells on the tongue. Function, provides information about different types of taste like sweet, sour, bitter, salty, spicy. Signs of gustatory sensitivity or need for input. Considered a very picky eater. Gag at certain foods. Eats only certain brands. Likes food at room temperature or prefers food too hot or too cold. Likes only bland or very spicy foods. Frequent drooling. Bite, chews, licks, inedible objects. Eats food with a particular texture like only crunchy foods or soft foods. Olfactory. Smell. Chemical receptors in the nasal cavity closely related to the gustatory system. Function. Provides information about different kinds of smells, musty, flowery, pungent. It is also related to the limbic system, responsible for memory and emotion. How this sensitivity presents itself? Hypersensitive may vomit with smells, struggle at mealtime, do not get the positive memories with food smells, easily distracted by simple smells, the smell of soap or cleaners. Hyposensitive may crave certain smells, hold things up to their noses, difficulty differentiating between safe and dangerous smells, strong cleaning products, markers. Strategies using physical activity. For many of the sensory processing issues that we have covered, the use of physical activity is encouraged, not just in an APE class, but throughout the school day. Movement breaks provide students with some of the sensory input they require to be successful throughout the day. Research shows that 15 minutes of exercise improved performance of cognitive tasks. This is also a great way to begin an APE class. Utilize a weight room if you have one or just engage in calisthenics to allow for optimum participation in any activity, especially if the students are to engage in a group activity. 
The strategies listed below are based on activities that are implemented in a PE setting, but can be utilized or adapted to work in classrooms or other settings. Tactile Touch Finding a way to engage students with a variety of tactile materials to either stimulate or soothe. Some ideas are have textured balls to play with. Allow students to walk on floor covered with thick mats. Blow bubbles so students can chase them and pop them. Have access to body socks or nylon stretch bands. Vestibular balance. This is an easy one. Use a BOSU ball for standing on during class time. Provide lots of opportunity for movement, preferably back and forth motion, as it is more calming. Jumping on a trampoline. Running games. Dancing. Tumbling. Yoga. Wheelbarrow races. Prioperceptive. Another fairly easy one to work with since there are so many great activities. Heavy work activities are great. Some possible activities to get the muscles moving and active are propelling self on a scooter board, jumping rope, running up steps, rope ladder, jumping jacks, push-ups, wall push-ups, walking with giant steps forward and backward, frog jumps, parachute activities, yoga, activities that cross the midline, left elbow to right knee, and windmills, and let's not forget the weight room. Visual. If your students are overstimulated, you want to keep your environment simple, with even to low light. Possibly engage in a weight room or a large gym without too many visually stimulating items. For those understimulated, a game like flashlight tag is a great option. Auditory hearing. Things to keep in mind when working with students who have auditory processing issues. Depending if they are hyper or hypo, you can either have music playing nice and loud or refrain from it as it would be a distraction. Also remember the acoustics in a gym can cause difficulty for some students. Some possible games to consider to work on these issues would be Red Light, Green Light, Red Rover, and any other games that provide directions. Stomping feet, marching to a beat, dancing to songs that provide movement instruction, hokey pokey, or even square dancing. Sometimes the overall volume of the gym class, or any class, can be overwhelming. Using a noise level indicator is a great visual reminder for students when the noise levels are too loud. The, the olfactory and gustatory senses may not have specific activities to engage in, but keep in mind that gyms, weight rooms, and the outdoors have very specific and sometimes strong smells that could cause discomfort to some students with these sensory issues. How to manage sensory processing disorders. Once you have determined the sensory processing disorders of the students you are working with, managing and preparing your space to meet their needs is a key component to being successful. Here are some tips 
on how to best manage behaviors. The process is similar to the steps utilized in problem solving. First, define or identify the problem. Identify the sensory processing difficulty and the level of responsivity. Think of at least three approaches that will help solve the problem. Choose an approach that will best match the sensory and responsivity needs of the child. Try your approach. If you did not get the desired results, try another approach. Another key component is being well prepared. Students with ASD, regardless of their sensory processing issues, respond well to a structured, well-planned setting. They like to know what is next. Here are some tips. Use a schedule. Be sure that the students can see and follow it. You can use pictures or words when creating the schedule. Knowing what is coming up next can help students anticipate and begin to self-regulate to ensure their success. Have a plan in place. If a student struggles to self-regulate, be ready to provide assistance. Maybe you could have a yellow card that the students can access when they feel overstimulated or understimulated. This can be their signal to you that they need changes in the environment. Each student with autism is an individual and not all strategies will work for every student. The key is to be aware of what sensory processing struggles your students have and be prepared with a few strategies to get your kids active and involved. One of the best resources you will find to help guide you in this process is your occupational therapist. Critical thinking activity. Read the scenario provided. Identify which area of sensory processing that the child is struggling with and whether they are hyper or hyposensitive. Now choose three activities to help this student enjoy your APE class. You have a student that arrives every morning and she engages in pacing behaviors as she waits her turn to go to her locker. She needs to wait her turn since being in close proximity to others can cause problems. She engages in rocking behaviors and often laughs loudly in class. Thank you for your attention.